Hi, my name is Ed Summers, and I'm a, a, a PhD candidate in the College for Information Studies at the University of Maryland. And I'm also a software developer in the Maryland Institute for Technology and the Humanities. Um, I, uh, my own uh, research interests are in the field of archival studies, so how archives are, are created and used, um, and the various sort of practices and theories that can go along with that. Um, and I'm specifically interested in something called archival appraisal, which is how um, values around what to collect um, uh, get expressed in the in in the archive, um, and specifically also uh, web archives. So these are collections of uh, content that were collected from the web and then put back into the web at a particular location. Um, so uh, I got interested in digital studies uh, kind of a long time ago, uh, sort of by accident. In the 1990s, I was studying to uh, to work as a librarian, and um, I uh, it, it was right around the same time that the the web was kind of taking off, and so I got exposed to um, different uh, programming languages and standards like you know HTML and SGML and things like that um, for uh, creating the web and. Um, so that, that that that's sort of like where my uh, my uh, exposure to, to digital studies kind of started, um, but uh, more recently I've been sort of working on this project called Documenting the Now, which I thought I would tell you a little bit about. Um, it is a project that is uh, trying to build um, ethical practices for the um, uh, collection. Um, preservation and analysis of social media content. Um, so thinking about uh, the ways that uh, social media content could participate in, in, in an archive. Um, and uh, this project started uh, really kind of following the, the murder of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, um, when um, uh, a lot of activists and protesters, uh, you know, were, were, were present in social media and were um, were bringing attention to the, um, uh, you know, the, the situation of, of uh, you know, that they were experiencing in, in Ferguson, but but really kind of like large rural kind of structural racism um, that exists in the United States, and uh, which went on to sort of like, uh, you know, become more legible as the Black Lives Matter movement, um, and you know, I, I got involved with another archivist named Burgess Jules. In sort of trying to collect social media content from Twitter and uh, try to 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 not only collect it but also sort of uh, position it as uh, re research material that was that was valuable, and uh, this work largely was informed um, well kind of from two different uh, areas. Uh, so one was this area of critical um, critical archival studies, which is a uh, an area where um, sort of like looking at the the role of power and archives is 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 you know a key factor, right? So um, the things that get archived and the things that don't get archived are often expressions of uh, d dominant power structures and and sort of thinking critically about those and ways to respond to those uh, you know those forces is is uh, what archivists need to be thinking about. Um, but also, more generally, um, I have this book here uh, by uh, Michel Rolf Trio, so Silencing the Past. And um, he writes uh, about historical production. Um, so uh, he says, uh, silences enter the process of historical production at four crucial moments. The moments of fact creation, the making of sources, the moment of fact assembly, the making of archives, the moment of fact retrieval, the making of narratives, and the moment of retrospective significance or the making of history. And, and so this book uh, for me, like really got me thinking about sort of the, those materials that people were putting into social media and how, you know, whether they were forgotten or, or, or remembered was actually a very significant um, fact. And, uh, you know, unless those, those records exist, right, people can't, can't, uh, can't do research with them. Um, but also, you know, I also got exposed to some ideas um, around um, different types of uh, counter publics, right? So um, I'm thinking of uh, the work actually of Catherine Knight Steele. She, uh, le I learned about the um, the role of di different uh, publics, so like enclaves and um, and satellites, right? 
where the, these are different uh, information spaces where uh, where the 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 public sharing of information is not um, not a priority, right? Like the the priority is actually around sort of these trusted uh, uh, circles of of of, of information sharing, and um, we we got to hear about this, uh, you know, directly from activists in Ferguson who had their own ideas about how they wanted their records to be uh, to to participate in an archive, um, and also uh, the Brown family themselves who had, uh, you know, requested that some of the material that was initially put on the public web uh, be removed by activists. So. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's kind of uh, a quick little view into this Documenting the Now pro project and how I think, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, race and, and critical race studies really kind of uh, inform the work.